Hunchback of Notre Dame is a 1996 American animated musical comedy drama film produced by Walt Disney Pictures feature animation for Walt Disney Pictures. What's good boy dudes and boy dudettes today we're going to review the 34th Disney animated feature film and the 7th animated film produced and released during the period known as the Disney Renaissance. The film is based on the 1831 novel of the same name written by Victor Hugo and what is the movie all about? Well, Quasimodo, a disfigured bell ringer of Notre Dame Cathedral who buys his time locked away in a tower with only gargoyles to keep him company, Quasimodo longs to be with other people leading to his chance encounter with the enchanting Gypsy Esmeralda voiced by Demi Moore when the beautiful young woman catches the attention of Quasimodo Guardian, since the Frollo, Quasimodo must help to keep her out of his clutches. Now, the film also start. The film was directed by Kirk Wise and Gary Sorsodale and produced by Don Han, and it features a voice cast of Tom Hughes, Demi Moore, Tony J, Kevin Klein, Paul Candle, Jason Alexander, Charles. Kim Braw, David Ogden Sturz and Mary Wicks in her final film role. The film is considered to be one of Disney's darkest animated films as its narrative explores such themes as um, lust, damnation, genocide and sin despite the changes made from the original source in order to ensure that a G rating by the MPAA. The musical score was also written by Alan Menken with songs written by Menken and lyricist Stefan Squatwat and who had previously collaborated on Pocahontas the year before and the film was released on June 21st 1996 to positive reviews and was a commercial success grossing over 325 million worldwide becoming the fifth highest grossing film of 1996 the film received an Academy Award and Global, Golden Globe Award nominations for Alec Mankin's musical score uh, a darker more gothic state adaption of the film was rewritten and directed by James Lapin and um, yeah, um, what do I think about this film? Well, I remember this film when I was a kid. Like, I only remember the song out there because it was on this VHS tape with all like the Disney songs. Like, I think it was called Disney Sing Along. And I remember that one song, and I always was like kind of disturbed by the way it visually looked because the visual look looked really dark. It had this very dark look to it. And yeah, it is a dark film. I've watched it for the first time um, years ago. and. I was a bit meh on it, you know, like I only really liked it for the songs, but the more times I watched it, the more I kind of started to enjoy it and realize how flipping dark it is and kind of sinister as well, you know, but the one thing that really does stick out with this film is definitely, definitely the grand animation. Out of all the Disney movies, this movie feels huge, I mean, it looks like the way they stage some of like the scenes, like the way the cinematography is done, the animation and the use of blending 3D animation, the background with the 2D characters really just like it creates this huge atmosphere and the soundtrack score like really, really elevates it. It feels so large. It feels like a really huge operatic movie. It doesn't what it feels like. It feels like an opera when I'm watching it, it feels so large and full of life and all that. The character animation is phenomenal. I love these character animations. It's so amazing. This is like 2D animation and it's one of its peak, you know, it's really good back here. It looks phenomenal, it looks beautiful. I love the backgrounds. I love, 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 love France in this movie. It looks, France looks good. France looks beautiful in this movie. Like, just look at France. Look at it, look how gorgeous it looks, it's just phenomenal, it's a really good movie, you know. Um, as well as the cool character animation, I also noticed that the lighting and the shading is done really well in this film, like, it looks like they really did do a heck of a lot, you know, they really, 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 really worked hard on this film. And I love it. I flipping love it. You know, I really do like it. And as I said before, this film really is the dark, one of the darkest films, um, in, like concerning films, as in like lust, damnation, and sin, as well as the belief in a loving, forgiving God. And yeah, it's 
also implies, according to Mark Pinsky, a condemnation of abortion and racism and a moral resistance to genocide as well. Like, the way Judge Frollo is like, you know, treats the gypsies like that, it's like not even human. He, he sees them as scum, but he can't resist M. Esmeralda. And there's this one really creepy scene where he's just sniffing her hair. And then Esmeralda's like, I know what you're thinking. And it's like, there's an entire song dedicated to Count Frollo saying that he wants forgiveness from God and, you know, he doesn't want, he blames Esmeralda for, you know, making him feel this way. And it's, it's kind of creepy and disturbing to be honest with you. It's like, oh my gosh, where is this film going? Like, mate, it is, it's pretty, pretty sick at times, but... It, it, I like it. I, I like the themes. I think it really does work, to be honest with you. It really works. I really do like it. The music, the mu dude, my dude, the songs in this film are amazing. You have, oh, oh my god, dude, oh my god. <laughs> like, uh, you've got the Bells of Notre Dame out there, Topsy Turby, God Help the Outcast, Heaven's Light, Hellfire. My gosh, dude, like, just really legendary, cool songs, you know. And the score itself is so great, you know. Like, it's one of my favorite Disney soundtracks out of, like, all the Disney films. Like, it's the one soundtrack I always go back to listening to. Like, I have it on Apple Music, and I love it. I love it. I like drawing to this music. I love it so much. It's a great, great film. The voice acting is also pretty damn good as well. Like, I think all the voice actresses and actresses do a really damn good job portraying these characters, you know. Um, I really do like them. I really do like um, Tom Hughes' performance as Quasimodo. Like, I, I do relate to this guy because this guy, he he dreams about being part of people. He wants to be with everyone else. He wants to live. He wants to share his life with everyone else. He wants to talk to people, but because he's deformed and you know, he doesn't want people, you know, people would not, like, treat him with the same respect, and it's sad, you know, it's sad, I mean, we all kind of relate to that in a way, and, you know, he's just, he's a really sympathetic character, and you really, really, really root for him, and, oh, Debbie Moore as Esmeralda, just great, 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 I love the design on her, she's so cool, Obviously, um, Tony J does a great performance as the ruthless, self-righteous, and religious, religiously perious Minister of Justice of Paris, Frollo. Like, he did a damn good job as well portraying that guy. I really do like him. Um, yeah, it, it, all these characters are really great, and I love the film. It's awesome. But why don't I like it as much as some other Disney flicks? Well, this is where we come to my mixed aspect, and... It's mixed coming towards negative, and despite this film being really good, there's a lot of comedic moments, particularly involving the gargoyles, that just come across really annoying and cringy. And I could have, I think this film would have been so much stronger without those gargoyles, but because it's a Disney film, they needed to make it lighter in a way. And yeah, I think. The movie had a budget of a million dollars, a hundred million dollars, but only made 325 million. And I believe the reason why is because, I mean, the themes and the plot of the film is very dark and it's very adult to a point where I don't think kids would really want to go in and watch this film, you know, like, it made money, but nowhere near the same as Lion King or the previous films, to be honest with you. So I feel like, mm, was it a box office? Failure, mm, I'm not too sure to be honest with you. Obviously, um, some viewers did criticize this film because it was too scary or violent at times for young children. And the, the fact that it involved issues like sexual obsession and religion, it was like Disney handling those type of topics. It's like, ooh, ooh, yeah, mm, yeah, hmm interesting yeah I mean this film did get you know in trouble in terms of like, the religion as side of things you know during like the late 90s but you can go and head of research all that there's a lot of stuff on Wikipedia about that but 
to kind of like briefly sum her up, like in June 1996, the Southern Baptist Convention voted overwhelmingly to urge its 16 million members to boycott Disney films, theme parks, and mer merchandises to protest behavior. It believes this purges Christian values. And I think mainly towards this one film in a way. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff about that. Uh, but a lot of people do love it, you know. I think as time went by, I think when it first came out, people were very like, oh my gosh. But then you have people like Roger Ebert who gave this film four out of four stars, calling it the best film since Beauty and the Beast. And it's like, oh, oh okay, okay. Um, so it's like, when it first came out, it, it was m mixed to positive, but as time went on, it got more positives in a way, you know. It, it you know, it progress to be more positive in a way and yeah it's a really good flick it does have its down moments it doesn't always do well i mean you do have that one love interest with esmeralda um captain phoebus not a fan of him not a fan at all i don't like that character and yeah well i'm gonna give this film a out of ten i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it an a Go check it out right now. But thanks for watching this review. Please like and share this video and comment down below and tell me what's your favorite Disney flick. With that said, thank you for watching. And as always, a board of reviews signing out.